Let's call the Zoning Commission regular meeting for December 16th to order. Um, we have a new member, Ann Erickson. I think you go on that. No, maybe seven. No. Hi, Kevin Gray. You may know Kevin Gray. Nice to meet you. And we have two alternates that are new, Diane Madigan and Sharon Shannon Knoll. Okay. We know them. Okay. And she introduced themselves to everybody else. So thank you very much. One point of order on land use commissions. Alternates um, may ask questions and weigh in on any public meeting, set, public hearing session. Um, unless you're appointed to replace a sitting member, you can't participate in the deliberations because the state has, uh, there's a legal uh, court decision that said that uh, only the elected officials can be the people that decide. So anyway, with that, we need to appoint an alternate and might. So Diane, Okay. <laughs> You're it, so now you can talk. Anyway, um, so we have minutes of the uh, last meeting on the December 9th special meeting. I didn't see the December 9th special meeting in the. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. It's I had uh, November 18th minutes on the Dropbox uh, uh, site. And the 21st were there too. Did we approve the 21st? We did. We did start to snap back and take that again. Um, I don't know why the meeting was the last meeting we not um, We can table that for the next mm -hmm. meeting. The, uh, the December, special meeting. The special meeting was just a workshop meeting. Yeah. Right? So there was no minutes because we didn't take any action. Um, okay, on the uh, motion of the minutes of the uh, 18th, motion to approve. I have a couple of comments. Um, just words to the thing on line 33, um, the point of all the minutes, that would delete full complementary commission. You say no appointment necessary. On line 133, I would prefer we say the discussion ensued by the commission that we were had by the hospital and work too colloquial to me. Uh, 162, we have the same wording issue. Uh, and that's it. Bruce, any comments? No. I recommend that we adopt the changes that you will see. Any other changes? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Be carried. Unanimously. Okay. On our public hearing, we're going to open public hearing um, for application 1948. So these are together. You, you can hear the two applications together for the public hearing. This is just any actions after the hearing is closed, you need to be separate for each application. Okay. So since they're, they're kind of twin applications, can you read the uh, call, Kevin? Uh, for for both. Yeah. Application 1948 of Edward Perigno, agent estate of Joanne Burke, owner for special exception, pursuant to Article 7, Section C. That Eight of the Cedar Zoning Rights regulations to create a rear lot of property located at 385 West Mountain Road, assessment map A19, block 5 of the lot, 002E5, zone R40. And application 1949, November 3rd, aided Paul Flynn, plus each owner for a special exception pursuant to Article 7, Section C.8 of the Cedar Zoning Regulations to create a rear lot of the property located at 389 West Mountain Road. Map, A19, 
we can access it with a 20-foot easement, um, but we have a potential buyer for that rear lot okay, that we prefer to own. I mean, if it's mandatory, we can we can okay. easily put that in there. I mean. As, as a lawyer representing people who buy properties all the time, if you can have your own title to something or an easement, you're always going to ask for your own title. But if that's a condition of approval, we'll do it by easement. Well, I've been on the commission most of the time. I've never said I'm going to commission matter. I assume the plan. 
some way of coming to know that it's good for the nation. And I'm not familiar with the regulations I'm reading, and I'm looking for compliance with the regulation. And the other offer is substantial explanation for the lies. I think my own opinion is the one that comes with the regulation. So we'll do it either. Yeah, but, it'll be fine. Yeah. But I have another issue when you're a land use attorney. Yes. Characterize what's going on here. Look at this one at a time. The first application, which is the first application, is that a subdivision or is that a resubdivision? I, I would I would say it's neither. I would say it's it's pursuant to your regulations where you can use this this process to get a beer lots, which is a special exception. So it's not it's neither. State statute might be wise that subdivision and resubdivision are the domain of the planning commission. And our own, our own regulation says that too. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm surprised to see this matter and it's not consistent with this commission. Yeah, this didn't come up last. This didn't come up last. It, it wasn't the question that you came to this week. So I think. But this, there was no conversation about the scope of this conversation. The requirement of the similarity of access from the two places, that wasn't discussed. So I raised it today. Now, I'll bring that up on the delivery public hearings. Okay, it's hard for me to hear what you're saying, and I think we don't have microphones here, so it's a little more difficult. But one thing, I believe, according to our zoning regulations, we can establish rear lots without it being a subdivision process. So I, I think you're bringing up something that doesn't I'm happy apply. to see that if you can find it that might be local or something. I don't know that it exists. Well, it says it, it says it first sentence. The zoning commission may grant a special exception to allow the rear portion of a lot of record. It there you have it. I mean, I can't. That's why we're here. That's why we went to the town. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I don't think a single one of these, if Mr. Bill can let me know, has gone for a subdivision or resubdivision approval process. I think it's it's done this way. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Well, when was the last one? Fine. Yeah. In the fall, right? Okay. <coughs> the, the other question was whether or not a dedicated strip of land versus an easement. We're going to solve that with an easement. So on a condition um, of approval. It seems easement. to me that that's a. Uh, you know, if there's a dedicated piece of land that goes to the back, that's better than an easement. I don't understand why we would concern ourselves. Well, I don't know who wrote the regulations, Dave, but... That's, why, we, but but that's why we're here, is to right. apply a little common sense to situations. Um, anyway. is always going to want his own property if you can. <coughs> yeah. If you want to insist on an easement, an easement. It doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but... I, I can read too, and it says shall. It doesn't say can be. It doesn't say alternatively. It says shall. Um, but I do. I do. Your point is extremely well taken, which is you know we're being hyper technical to the detriment of what we're trying to accomplish. Here. Well, it does because it assumes it's a rear lot which doesn't have frontage, and you're making it a rear lot that has frontage. Anyway. Uh huh. Any other questions? Before we open up to the public, Kevin? Um, I, I, I don't know if we can get some clarification yet. Because it doesn't say no. Great one, residential, no school funding. I think we need to discuss that one whether I, I, I think it does make more sense to do it by ownership than, than by uh, easement. Now, is it true that we? don't have the uh, 
purchase. Okay. So I got an email this afternoon from the health district. They were out on site. Um, they actually direct quote, she didn't have an issue with uh, granting approval. They ran into real sandy soils. And Brian can speak to that since here. But it's attached to my staff report and the emails from Kristen Kula. She sent it to me about 1 13 this afternoon. Hi, Mike. You did a quick review of the two lots submitted by Brian Dental and Surveyor. It does not appear the lot. It does appear the lots are capable of supporting septic systems and well, Kristen. So you have to, you have an okay from the health district on this for these two lots. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the commission? Um, <coughs> okay. Let's open it up to the public. Uh, if anyone in the public here to speak to this application. Is everybody else's interest otherwise? Uh, I have a first. Um, okay. Are we ready to close the public hearings? Any reason we shouldn't, Mike? Should we make this one? It's all happened. All right, that move. We close the public hearing on application 1648 and uh, 1948 and 1949. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Carries 6 nothing. and close the public hearing. Okay, now we can consider these applications. Uh, Mike says we should do them one more time. So, application 1948. That's, uh, That's the northern one. So this is 385 West Mountain Road. And is that the one that we have the question? Do you have a staff report here somewhere, Mike? You do. You do. With the issue of the easement, I guess the commission should determine whether. Um, would may uh, require an e easement to serve the rear lot versus uh, fee and loop, or basically uh, a fee simple ownership of that parcel. As Kevin brought up to your point about how your regs talk about creating a lot without frontage along the public road, and you're creating a rear lot now with frontage. <coughs> and the applicant kind of said to you that if the commission wants to uh, require an easement here, they were amendable to say an easement to serve this property in the public hearing. Okay, and given that their objective here is to eliminate non conformities, mm -hmm. we should accept that. <coughs> we should accept well, their offer to make it would eliminate an non conformity. Okay. Any other comments? I just want to be sure the record is clear on this. That we're accepting the modification of the plan to show an easement for access of the rear lot to the front of 385 West Mount Road. But it's, that's a change that we should have expected. Our regulation says access to the rear lot shall be provided shall be provided by easement. And so when we see drugs come up, number two, we shouldn't see on one an easement on the other one. It's an own strip of land. Correct. I, I, I'm all in favor of accepting the modification and putting that in as a condition. But I'm not settled with whether we have the authority as own to act on this matter. And I, I read for you unless others have the regulations to put three to one or something. This is uh, Article 7 of C8, and it says, no, if the division by special permit meets the definition of the subdivision or resubdivision under Connecticut law, it must be processed by the planning commission. It must be processed by the planning commission. But there's a, there's a language difference here. Special permit is different from the special exception. Well, maybe that's what it's all about. It's a special permit. It's a 
same thing. Special <laughs> special permit, special exception is the same. There can the the real the key is though the planning commission create cannot create a lot that doesn't meet zoning. So even if this is considered a subdivision or resubdivision, they need their special exception from this commission in order to file to, with the planning commission. The planning commission can't create a lot that doesn't meet the frontage requirements. So in, in the case if this was considered a resubdivision or subdivision, they still have to come to this commission first and have the special exception in here. But in this case, this is you you you, you allow the creation of real lots by a special exception. And that's been done without the planning and the right. Correct, because those have been determined as cuts that weren't, they either were first, cut, uh, first cuts. So under Connecticut law, if you have a, a lot that pre-exists through subdivision regulations, everyone is entitled to split it into two. Um, in this case, if you split it into two and you create a lot that doesn't have frontage along the public street, that doesn't meet um, the frontage requirement, in this case, our 40, so it'd be 200 feet of frontage, the, the avenue to create that division, to legalize that split, that free split, would be the special exception. Um, but in the case, let's say you had a lot that was split off from a larger lot, and now you want to create a rear lot, you still need to have that special exception to, to establish it because you'd be creating a lot that doesn't meet the zoning regulations because you don't have the frontage. So it's kind of, we're, it's still, it's, they, they should be here. So if we agree with this, we can go ahead and make a motion. Okay. So actually, I want to turn. So if it would qualify as a subdivision because it was legally as a subdivision, then it would have to go to the plan. I think it's what that reg is saying. If this doesn't qualify as a true subdivision because there is not enough frontage, so therefore it doesn't go to the plan. Well, what that reg is, I think, saying is it's speaking to more like, let's say, um, you had a, you had a divi division of land that was the third or second cut off of another parcel. You still the granting the special section wouldn't say, hey, you got a subdivision, you're safe. You would get the ability to create the lot as a real lot because you, it's a specially permitted use technically in all the residential or some of the residential zones. Not all of them. You can't do it in the, the smaller zoning districts like the R15s. Does that make sense, Kevin? I'm sorry. No, I, I, I does it meet the definition of a subdivision or not? This one does not. That does. Well, does it? It does. Because if it meets this definition of a, a subdivision, then it has to be processed by the But it's a state statute. It's a state statute. But that's off of one parcel. Three or more, not all. Well, two. Only two. Well, only two parcels. So, one. so it gets back to you. Have the right to divide your parcel into two. It's just a real lot, so it's not a subdivision. Well, again, it's a matter of you, know, you can look at this in, in, in a variety of ways. But here's one. Here's two. And the solar car is coming up three. So that's a clip from one. But there's number still three. a second number, parcel. Number, number three to five. No, three goes the other way. Yes, right. So it's not part of that. That's one. No, actually, the land, there's actually a court case that the land sold, that strip, that strip is not considered a subdivision. You sell something to someone to make their lot, you know, enlarge it. It's only considered a subdivision if that was sold off for building purposes. The additional frontage would not be considered a frontage. Okay. I know, it's, it, it's plain, plain read of the statute, I agree with, with Bruce, but the specifics of it, no, this does not fall. Okay. We'll make a motion. Uh, so we're going to make the motion that we lose the By using the driveways by these. Yes. We approve application 1948 and submitted with it. There's a change that access to the rear rear lot will be by easy. And I'll second that. <laughs> did you get that, Jim? Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. Now we can discuss. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
I'm in favor of the concept. Okay. Let's consider the second. And the second one, Bruce, do you have a question on that? Other than we shouldn't do it at all? No, that one's so Once he buys the land, he's a neighbor. And he's just cutting the one wire. So the question is, okay. 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 Yeah, I'm moving right to the one. Move approval of application 1949 as well. Second by you. Questions? Okay, can I answer? Sure. Uh, the special exception is subject to the following conditions. Applicants provide two copies of my large plans for signature by the chairman, one print to be filed with the members of town clerk, the second print to be filed with the Okay, we, can, go back we, can do, we can do that. It's the, it's the, same, the same map. Okay, all right. Then we can take twice the time for ourselves. Okay. And you agree with that? Mark? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You guys agree with that? Okay. 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 All in favor? Yes. All right. All right. All right. Opposed? All right. All right. You're opposed or not? Okay, so it's five to one, it passes. Okay, we have a new application, Mr. Donahue, for a site plan the previously approved plan to remove the affordable housing deed restriction on the property located at one meeting house. Mr. Donahue. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. For the record, I'm T.J. Donahue, and I'm here tonight representing the estate of Mrs. Burke. I'm here with her daughter, the executor of the estate, Sue Gleason. And the Bitterleys are here as the willing and motivated buyers to buy the property, which is before you for consideration. When the Power Forest was established uh, and, and originally created, 14 units were designated to be workforce housing, somewhat like a affordable housing it, it, the thought was that they would put market rate collars on the houses and an actual formulate uh, collar on the houses the houses are market rate affordable because those 14 houses were of smaller size and it was established that the, the price of the houses at the time they were sold eventually were at or about the, the per square foot house cost of the other houses so these are smaller houses within a larger neighborhood to achieve the goal of some affordability in Sittenberg, which is a house where there was significant appreciation of housing values at the time. The 14 restrictions went on. Uh, they were never really effective. Uh, anyone who's done math on them shows that the collars were too high to really establish any real affordability and that market rates, even the subject contract today, is well below the collar value which would be imposed. <coughs> So we have the bitter leagues who've lived in town for, for I don't know, but I played Chamber of Commerce softball and Bill uh, in college, so he thought that was a lot. And he, they stand trying to purchase this house from the leases, from the, from the estate. And uh, what's before you tonight is a request by you to consider removal of the collar or the restriction, which is in the land records and applies to 14 houses. Now, the, of, the affordability has been weighed by the town in numerous occasions. When, when the Potter Forest got to a point of success and then a little bit of a slowness, these land use agencies reconfigured and restructured the uh, nature of the subdivision and created the Carson Way subdivision with the new the entrance onto Stratford Road, a new design of the houses, a new pattern of the layout of the houses. And uh, and at that time, it was understood by the community that there were seven affordability covenants which were imposed on the ground of those houses. 
<coughs> and after much work, of, I was not a part of it, but I read it and followed it, uh, they made a decision that the uh, Carson Way should go forward with a new designed house because of its desirability for the community and, and its compatibility with the existing community, and that they would allow the purchase of what the buyout of the rights of the caller for $7,000 a unit, and that was done. At that time, the configuration of the houses was changed, the style of the houses was changed, the 55 and over restriction was removed, and uh, these affordability restrictions were brought out of those units. At that time, seven units remained, uh, and one of those has been bought out. I don't have the detail with Unite for a payment of $7,000. We have an understanding with the town council and with the town manager that if this board sees fit, we would be able to buy out the covenant on this property for a payment of $7,000 to the town fund, which provides for social service needs. <coughs> and we stand ready to be able to do that. Why do we seek this? We seek this because as a caller, it's ineffective. Uh, <coughs> We did attach with our application a, a calculation that was prepared that showed that the caller would never affect this price or this contract price, and it's not equal to $20,000 of it. It's likely it would never affect it. More importantly, we're here because, and I'm going to have Attorney Murphy uh, talk to you for a moment, uh, but the buyer has had some problems with their lender and with the lending environment with respect to a caller like that. And John, if you have a moment. I am John Murphy. I'm uh, an attorney with the Pamela Fitzgerald of Union in Hartford, but uh, more importantly, I represent the bitterly sue of my in-laws. And uh, they're sitting right behind me. They're, they've been here for 56 years, and they'd like to stay in town, and they found the perfect unit for them. Unfortunately, uh, as we looked at the title search, uh, there's a deed restriction in the, in the deed that refers to this uh, not only restriction on the sale price hypothetically because the it's hypothetically because the numbers probably would never impose that restriction and it also uh, refers to a right of first refusal for in favor of the town uh, to purchase the unit at this price determined in the uh, index again hypothetical uh, starting i think in 2029 just that far away uh, but that restriction in and of itself raised some red flags for the lawyers, the title companies, and now the bank. Uh, it's, it's essentially unfinanceable at this point. Uh, banks do not, lenders do not like or deal well with rights of first refusal or restrictions on the sale price. Uh, that's the problem, the practical problem that we're facing. Again, I think it's a hypothetical problem, but it doesn't matter. Banks don't deal well with either of those either the restrictions or the uh, right of first refusal, hypothetical or not. Um, as a practical matter as well, because these price restrictions are never, we don't think will ever kick in unless perhaps Google decides to move into Simsbury, uh, the town's going to generate more revenue for affordable <coughs> housing, but with the seven thousand dollar fee, than it ever would with the restrictions. And I don't see the town ever exercising a right of first refusal to purchase the property, even if they could. I'm not sure they have the authority, but that's again, that's hypothetical as well. So we're looking for some relief. I understand that the selectmen or the, the executive. Yeah, the town, town manager has the authority to give the release subject only to the approval of this commission. And we also understand, as TJ mentioned, that this commission has, must have approved several other uh, units. So we're looking for that consistent uh, policy and approval and a closing, hopefully, on Wednesday. So, Okay, so the, basically we're being asked to remove something that's not effective that is impeding the actual sale exactly. of the unit. Um, 
I think the situation appears that the, to me that the uh, life action was on the condition at the time that was started. But the implementation of the uh, caller was it was you couldn't sell anything, you couldn't have a sale price that was greater than the initial price plus the consumer price index. Of, it was actually a housing index, which now, according to these numbers, it's that's way above the market price at this point. So, anybody have any questions? That was confusing to me at first. Um, I thought that the correspondence with your client was helpful to make clear. Uh, I would say this, though. I was interested in the proposed buyout of the restriction. And you, you identified December 12, 2012, as the design when the board of selectmen adopted the conditions from the old one. And, uh, I looked at the minutes. There's no meeting on December 12th, December 10th. This topic wasn't there. I couldn't find it. I think it was 2002. Oh. I think. Uh, that's well, just recollection from my conversation with Dr. There was, Bruce, there was a, uh, they, they did it on the 10th of December 2012. And in the, in the, all it says is that the selectmen agree to authorize the first selectmen to negotiate a settlement to remove that restriction. And I didn't go over I couldn't find them. I couldn't find them. Right. <laughs> but that was well, related, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was related to, to the 2011 application that went to this commission with Carson White. Right. Right. So that, that, yeah, that action was specific to Carson White. Yeah, we remove, we can remove the restriction, but the contract between the town and the promoter, or the developer, uh, was a deal with the town, which the selectmen had the only authority to, to negotiate. So once we, if we were to get permission to remove it, then they still have to negotiate with the town. And it appears that seven thousand dollars is the price. <laughs> no well, I mean, did you say that there were originally fourteen units that had this set of restrictions, and that seven bought out for seven grand each? When Carson White and that deal was the developer bought the seven rights out for one pay. Oh, okay. I know they they were bought out, not individual. Okay, but it got resolved at seven thousand. Yes, and I believe there's one unit. At least one unit reference to that uh, uh, correspondence that was also a seven dollar unit in other boards. In the intervening years. Oh, okay. That wasn't necessarily the case. Yeah. I think yeah. Well, I think but, you know the numbers reasonable. And the, the notion of getting relief here is reasonable. So I am just I'm not attached yet to how it gets to be the zoning commission that has the authority to do this. Because the only because the restriction was and then it has to be endorsed by the board of selectmen. No, the, the town yes, the town the corporate authority will have to convey you can't convey. But we're here tonight for a site plan amendment because the only thing that empowered the restriction in the first place was the condition of a site plan. And that's why it needs to be a site plan amendment. We're looking for a site plan amendment, just as it specifically impacts this specific as part of the site plan approval, the applicant in 2004 the three agreed to these conditions with the town. And with the town meant the selectmen. So the contract for the affordable control was with the selectmen. And it was a condition of the site plan approval. So we have to remove the site plan approval restriction. And then the town Board of Selectmen can take, take up $7,000 and release it. I spent all day trying to figure this out. <laughs> well, I guess there will have to be a further discussion if we endorse and approve the application and then the Board of Selectmen for some reason. Where are we? We're, By Wednesday. We're, it's out of our hands. hands. 
home pretty quickly. My instruction, my communication from town council is that they do not want to move forward without this action on the site. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? If you have questions, Mike, you're back. I'm, I've been unseated though, so, uh, which is just fine with me. I'll be an alternate for a night. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't have any questions. I mean, I, I, my questions would be how this ever happened. And, like, it seems like such a convoluted process, but, I mean, the precedent seems to have been set at this it point. It was straightforward at the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. At the time. But, yeah, no, so no questions at the moment. Uh, yeah, it was an attempt to try to make affordable housing without the constraints of the state statute, which would have been 30 years, and... Um, income constraints on the buyers and uh, that wasn't deemed to be appropriate at that time. Now, you're sure the covenants are 30 years. This was 25? This was 20. 20? 20. I think that the right of first refusal goes for 99 years beginning in 2020. <laughs> well, now we don't think we want to know that. <laughs> But since the constraint is seemingly sensible at this point. We're getting seven thousand dollars over the market, so people should come here crying about the seven thousand dollars. Anyways, do we have a right, right, I'm sure I move that we approve application nineteen Second by Donna. She's really good tonight. <laughs> Any further questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry six nothing. Thank you. Make your families happy here tonight. Not often we're able to do that. I want to tell us. <laughs> hmm? Okay. We have lost the agenda here. Okay. Mike. Have any correspondence and the regulations up to 1951. No, one. Yeah. one application left. Oh, sorry, that. Uh, oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the one we have pictures on. <laughs> sorry, TJ. 1951. Go ahead. Members of the commission. We're here tonight with this Silverman group. We're building the rigid top pack with a request for a site plan amendment. And I've got slides in the back here. I don't know if you want to move for that or whatever. But I'll, first of all, i got Dan Lacey here, who's the executive vice president of all construction for Silverman Group. Uber RC, who's the project manager of trade, and Ross Lewicki, who's from VHB. And uh, our site plan is simply a well, this application. They're very pleased to be in Sim Trade. They have completed 78 units. 48 are occupied. They remain in full construction mode and wish to refine the development for market conditions and to balance the rich community. They seek modification of the site plan to reduce the number of townhomes and to substitute a residential structure which will provide a greater number of one bedroom units. Therefore, they present this site plan amendment to change three and a quarter townhome units for a single 32 to 36 unit apartment building, which will also increase the number of one bedroom units. The structure will have identical elevations to the building which now exists facing Hot Meadow Street in the center of the site. Our research tells us that people come either rich at Simsbury prefer single floor living with elevators as opposed to walk up spaces on three levels. And that's not all people, but that is a, a, a higher percentage of folks coming than we thought. The architects and engineers have designed the layout modifications to preserve all aspects of the walkable TND neighborhood. 
They will replicate all the design features of the existing built structure, the landscaping and streetscape elements. The Water Pollution Control Authority Tony Piazza has reviewed the proposed site plan and assured us that while there will be additional charges, there will be more than enough capacity. So this is the office, of, if you haven't been to the ridge, this is the sales office there with the map, it's the clubhouse. There's the view from the street. That's one of the two commercial buildings. We report to you tonight that we have a prospect for that building. And we also, that the, 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 the Dan Lacey's going to be pulling permits for the other 8,000 square foot building within several months. Commercial building. This is a layout of our plan. This is, the, this is the change that we're making, this building and this building. And the, that change is, you can see right now, those are three townhome structures and a five townhome structure here. We're going to eliminate one of, the, one of the townhomes here to make that a four. And then we're going to displace these buildings with this building, which is a 32-unit building. It's, it's the building that you see. Uh, directly to the left, to the uh, left of the entry drive, it's it's fully built and occupied. And there it is with the. the uh, this slide is designed to show the outline of the three townhome structures. So there's one, two, three. Because this is a TND neighborhood and the, an urban design, you have to occupy all the sidewalk space. You can't create gaps in it, and that's why it's such a good fit to have the. 32 unit structure. That's what it will look like. Uh, this is the one that has lost one townhome unit on the end. And here's the new structure. That was the elevation that we promised you when we built this thing, when we started the work journey. And that's the built structure. It's not the same view, but uh, I think you can see that we paid pretty good attention. They have paid pretty good attention to the detail. So that's the 32 unit 32 structure, and that's what we intend to replicate the rear of the site. These are the rear elevations of the building, and these were done for design review, but they show that's the end of the unit as built. You can see how favorably that compares. And there's the rear of the site, which shows the garage units under it, and that's also built to totally consistent. They even look better than the renderings, which is changed, and that's the other end. There's a view of the building on the left. As you are in the courtyard looking towards the mountain and the clubhouse. These are the uh, townhome elevations, and that's what's being displaced. These, this is here just to show you what's displaced by that. And that is the, uh, that's just a view through the site uh, toward where we've been going. Again, what we're asking for is a site plan amendment. The site plan amendment is simply to substitute the new structure for the three and one quarter townhome structures that will be removed. Uh, and I've got the full team here for any questions that you might have. I have a question, I'll start with, unless you want to start okay. with that. I just want to be sure I got this. The 30, 32 unit structure to be introduced here is a mirror image of the same size. Over the other one. This will make you one across. Yes. Same size, no difference. Same height, same height. It's the same height. Identical. The interior configuration may be changed to have more one bedroom units and less. Of the well, of the 32 units, are they all one bedroom or is there two? No. Do we have to break down of that? Ten. Ten. Ten, ten one bedroom, the 32 as designed, and the balance are two. So, ten ones, 22 trees, and what are we giving up? This is 13 townhouses. 13 two bedrooms. 13 two bedroom townhouses. Bottom line, that bottom line would be the occupancy. So, are we increasing on the or are we increasing by how much? Increasing by 23 units. If you envision, I mean, I know you'd have to make how many units there, 
start the goal with 16 one bedrooms to 22 bedrooms. So if we're getting rid of 32 bedrooms, we got double, double the number of bedrooms. The other issue you have is that in the town home, everybody counts the lots as a better meeting of the I'm just thinking strictly from a crowding standpoint, because the area is already very crowded. So I'm just, are we looking at adding additional bodies? I'm not very technical, but I'm just wondering if there's going to be more people in general. There will probably be another six to dozen people on the site for sure. So that would have an impact on the school district on Latimer Lane, mm -hmm. potentially? Uh, the uh, school numbers are pretty Do we have any increase in school numbers on the census? Not for your development ahead of the others. There's only, so excluding this development, there's 766 uh, residential units that are approved, and we have uh, 114 kids that are enrolled through the various developments. It comes out to uh, 0.14 kids per unit of uh, the 766 that were approved. 0.14. And that's excluding this development. Because that, that was as of enrollment numbers from October 1 from the Board of Education. Latimer has had a significant increase. I think they're changing all the isn't it? I think the change to one better use commission all would be a that's would take pressure off but that would kind of piggyback on what you're saying well i went to that school meeting did you go to yes, the school meeting yeah so i mean that that's i don't think six kids is going to make all no. the difference in the world but that's obviously a big concern right now because so. they're already yeah they're already bursting mm -hmm. the seams. Yeah. i'll be going from 50 from 26 bedrooms to 54 bedrooms so you're doubling okay. the number of bedrooms wow you're, you're adding seven two bedrooms and 16 one bedroom. Yes, that's 14. First, that's 30. So you're really adding, adding two, seven units where there's two bedrooms, where there could be kids. Correct. In school. Yeah, do you have the site plan? It's a slide. Yeah, Shannon, um, you shouldn't. Be a part of this discussion. Oh, I can't. It's not a public. It's not a public hearing. Okay, great, great. Okay. okay, sorry. Uh, it's not hurting anything. I can't stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> it just comes out. <laughs> I understand. We don't want to get in trouble. No, no, sorry. Okay. Yeah, um, I have a question. Yeah. Yes. And um, again, forgive my ignorance, but um, is there are there parking spaces lost in this? We're losing. 23 spaces, but those spaces were specific to the townhome units. So it was garages and tandem spaces. As far as surface shared residential, you're not losing any spaces. So you, you, your ratio is going to go down, but for those townhome units, they each had, let's say, the double garages had four spaces for that one unit. So you're really only losing unit specific parking, not as far as the stacked flats where you're, you're sharing through the whole building. <coughs> So a, a, an apartment would only anticipate having two spaces, is what you're saying, as opposed to a townhome that would anticipate having four? It, it, it had four that they could strictly only use themselves. Okay. So we only got rid of the strict townhome spaces. As far as additional surface spaces, none of that has changed. Okay. 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 I'm just wondering which building we're here. Maybe the, I have a problem. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And this is one of us. That's a five that we right, four. Which one's built? This one is built. The bottom one. Okay. Yeah. That one's built, and we're going to do that up there. Yeah, this is the and the reason it has more, the new one has more units is because there's more one bed? Or is it bigger? It's, no, it's the same size. Yeah, externally it looks the same. It's the same footprint as the 32. What we'd like to do is generate more one bedrooms in the same footprint. So that's why the 36. That's why the 36 increase. 
But it looks the same. It looks the same footprint, same exterior. Same put your marker on the new building here. Here it is, right, right, right here. That's put your marker so, on it right here. In that quadrant. So that took the place of three townhomes. So you're marking right now in this structure. Yes. Not original. Correct. stories of our market research show that the one bedroom apartments are more uh, more desirable than the two bedroom three story townhomes aren't selling well <laughs> how, uh, how much higher is that in townhomes they should be the same height because they're both three stories three and a half so i think i believe it's 50 feet <coughs> they're not the building will not be any higher than the townhomes there are findings that do single floor living with elevators desired by more more democratic uh, the three floor one yeah. well we've seen the, i think the uh, townhouses that are over by the uh, clmp no the one the one's over here uh, yeah, no, 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 no. by no pond no. uh, those took a long time to sell the townhouses the apartments themselves were filled up. I think they still have one townhouse that isn't sold on that stretch. So what they're recognizing is the market isn't. Yeah. Are the townhouses yeah. owned or are they condos or are they apartments? Everything here is rental. Plus the difference too. That's different. Sounds like an economic sort of decision that they're making. Was well, there any chance of making more than one bedroom instead of two bedrooms? Just to cut down on the number of additional bedrooms. Is what you're... Well, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, just, I just know that there's a big problem. overcrowding issue at that end of town. You know, one thing you should know about this developer is uh, it's a family. And they want to hold this for three generations and they make very careful decisions, and I think they're pleased with the mix that we proposed here. There's a lot of confusion too about the, how the how the board of ed is going to solve the problem of imbalance among the schools. And, you know, that, we can't solve that problem here by changing the apartments. I don't think. Oh, well, but one one part of the equation is the uh, the tremendous amount of taxes that these facilities are paying in the town right now. There, it was. The town participated in this design to fill the gap of the loss of the Hartford. And this thing is a running head start on that. So that is that's part of it. That's part of it. Yes, so there's more benefit to one bedroom apartments than there is to two bedroom apartments. Yes, but studios are better. They have to make a decision to make an economic, you know. Well, just what the demand is. Yeah, you've got, you've got to respond to the demand, and we have to rely on them to do that. I'm just curious. How long have the uh, how long has this been for sale in general? You know what I mean? I mean, I, I should know. I drive by it all the time. But how long has this been built in existence? The COs were March, March, March. March. Okay, so it's less than a year. Okay. I guess I would just say the part I find interesting, and I don't know what your research, what you've done with your research, but the. Um, different um, assisted livings in the area, uh, both in this town and in the neighboring town, are all putting up new complexes. And they're all putting in two two bedrooms and two bedrooms and a den. So I'm just wondering why you feel that there is more of a uh, call for the one bedroom. May I, may I respond to your sure, assisted please. living? This, uh, this building... Or independent, you, not just assisted, but independent living. But, but assisted independent living, this is a, the, the Alchemy site which is independently owned by CA Ventures. It has 110 units. It's fully CO'd. Frankly, it looks like a Four Seasons Hotel if you're in it. And uh, it, it, it's responsive to, to certain of those among us and have the type of size designs of individual units within it. Mm -hmm. This is a, just a, the, the rest of the site is, a, is apartment buildings, but that uh, that's responsive to 
the needs you talk about and the size of what you talk about. Okay. I was, because I was saying not just assisted living, but rather people who are choosing independent okay. living at, at a McLean or at a Seabury or a Gun yeah. Pass or something like that. This is one of those facilities as well. And of course, our units are the same too. You know, they tell me that this facility here, one of the primary groups that they find coming there are people, our grandparents who have kids, who have grandchildren, etc. I think they're 17 or 20 filled and they're just recently sealed. Hmm. Questions? More questions? Going, going, going. All set. Kevin, do you have a question? Uh, I'm just wondering what the point of the resolution needs to be clearer about the number of units. Just 32 residential units that clarifies one versus two bedrooms. The commission is concerned you could condition it upon the number of bedrooms asked for something by the applicant. If you were concerned with that. All right, that's okay. Please. It just to make sure it's just a method that they have. Yeah, both of them. All right, now, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve application 1951, TJ Downey, Regent, uh, LLC, owner for second time amendment to switch out 13 townhouse units for 32. <coughs> Staff flat residential units on property located at Street approval of the site plan and conditions of approval. Administrative zoning permit is required for construction. And two, the commission authorizes staff to approve minor changes to the plans such as landscaping, grading, etc. Said changes are being made in writing to staff and required implementation. But isn't it 36? Yeah, it's 36. Up to 36, we'd like to fit the ones in there. That's what I'm saying. If that's, excuse me, I don't want to talk about that. Okay. Is 32 the correct number? 32 is what they applied for. 36 is on the site. You can only approve what they applied for is 32. The actual application is 32. <coughs> Okay, we have a second. Second one. Did somebody second already? Yep, down here. Okay, further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Okay, we have five for one. Okay. So it passes. Thank you very much. Noted. Noted by the opponents in each of these cases. The one that voted no yes. was Diane. Okay. Thank you all. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, because the one that votes no can then have reconsideration, make a reconsideration request at, a, at the next meeting. So we have to know who it was. Um, Mike, correspondence. What I do have is a ball from the last meeting. The special meeting when we were discussing home occupations. Uh, I look, took a look at all the surrounding towns and how they're regulating home occupations. Also, in the Dropbox, there's a copy of a revision to home occupation uh, language in the proposed regs. This was, wasn't in your uh, Dropbox. I just put it this afternoon. Um, sorry. <laughs> and Mike's giving me a look. <laughs> you got the stink guy. You're darn right. <laughs> I, I caught it from across the room. <laughs> um, but I wanted to pull the. Uh, this is probably a follow up in our conversation kind of go, what's everyone else doing? Is anyone like calling out stuff that's not customary as home occupation? Are there common themes of how they're regulating? I mean, you can take a look at what everyone's doing. A lot of people are doing the tiered approach, a minor versus a major. The, 
the separating factor is whether they're doing it as as of right or requiring a simple zoning permit. That's really one of the two things. Um, you take a look at the town of Farmington. They have an interesting reg on the first page for the two different types of uh, tiers of approval. But I have on the list Farmington, Avon, uh, Canton, and I was on the phone with the planner in Granby. I didn't have her stuff in here, but hers, their regs are very um, permissive for home occupations. However, um, they allow avenues for other uses at, at home, such as a landscaping business. They don't treat it as a home occupation. They require, that's a specially permitted use in residential zoning districts. So just food for thought, maybe, is if commission, you felt in some condition it was appropriate to have those uses, we may, we may be able to do that as a, uh, regulate it as a, as a separate uh, special exception independent of the home occupations. But I just caution you because, as as we know, once you approve a, hockey, a home hockey, uh, special exception, it runs with the land single or variance. So if you do open, go down to regulate those uses by that um, you know, uh, permitting process, you just run that risk that it's permanent. So what is our course here? Should we? I, I almost. I just ask the commission take a look at the other regs in the other communities. Um, I have that draft based on our, our discussion at the, at the workshop, and let's maybe try to find the middle ground between what everyone else is doing and versus some of the concerns that we had. Because um, I think some of these regs, there's some there's some points in here that would be great to incorporate in our regs that may simplify the process. Um, the other thing is, is is just landing on what is considered a customer and home occupation and what is not. Like, like I gave the examples of the logging business, for, is that or the landscaper. Are those considered customer and home occupations? Because those are the questions I get here in my office, which then, as we know from previous applications, come before this commission under the current regulations. So in the new regs, you know, we kind of look at some of those issues and say, we can maybe say that those are not considered uh, customer and home occupations or the characteristics of those uses are not considered the conditions. For you people that are new, one of the things here is that we probably make the numbers up, but we probably have 800,000 people who work at home in various things in town. And the vast majority of those should be as of right. There shouldn't be any, you just do it. And you don't need any permission. Um, and we started trying to find the things that um, needed to be controlled and it's basically annoying the neighbors. Um, you get noise, odors, those kinds of things. And then you get into equipment. Uh, if you're a landscaper, suddenly that means you've got big equipment and most of the neighbors don't like those kinds of things. And so this is where Mike was seeing, well, maybe we should have a list of prohibited things or things that you can only do by in some other zone. Um, the other thing is you have some other artists in town who have large auxiliary and accessory <coughs> buildings and things that we somehow or other all kind of like. But in a form-based world, we have trouble trying to figure out how you permit those as of right. So we're struggling with those things and that's why we were looking at what other neighboring towns did. And we probably should schedule another workshop early in January, unless people are going to be here at Christmas, <laughs> um, to spend uh, an hour, an hour and a half and, and having read all those things try to decide what really should be in our regs. And that's kind of the, the last big component that we have to uh, put together. Comments or questions? Between the landscaper and the hairdresser or whatever. Yeah, hairdresser. We have approved hairdresser as a special exception 
Yeah, I know. In one case. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jurassic. Oh, you're uh, I was going to say, I live in Jericho. We have them all. Trust me. We have <laughs> the good ones and we have the bad ones. So uh, I definitely are, think there should be some regulations. And there is, there is in one of the towns, uh, one, one uh, seat of hairdressing is as a break. But if you went beyond that, you couldn't. So uh, in our regs, we get the person who had one had to get a special exception. Mm -hmm. But now that goes with the property. So they can sell that property as a hairdressing salon or a garage or something. That's interesting. Whereas I'm not sure that that's what we really want to do mm -hmm. with those home occupations. So right. anyway, it's a, it's a fun thing. <laughs> well, part of the dilemma as we look at the notion of review and adjust our entire regulation that we're really aren't working on sort of, I'll call it the core piece of that book. One of the dilemmas is trying to figure out where others stop. Because there's no rule book on what towns exactly can regulate us. We can use our imagination. We find ourselves agonizing over fairly small stuff that is at the far reaches of what anybody's regulating. And when we're asked to justify the regulations that we propose, well to say that they reflect the surrounding communities and contemporary practice. Right now, it's a little bit of a stretch in some areas, but we're working on that. That's what we're after. So it's not, there's more judgment involved in this process than you might think. But now you're on the team and you'll see it. <laughs> and for three new members, I have, I'll print you up copies of the new draft regs so you have to speak with that. Um, and I'll give you, we had binders that we made for the commissions. You can see some of the, some of the areas that we were addressing over the summer. And you can kind of get up to speed. That would be great. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay, Kevin. I think we're very stupid. All right. We'll go Second by Donna. All in favor? Thank you. We're adjourned. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.